Hi everyone, Anna from girlsonkey.com. We do videos and podcasts about poetry. Today's video is about narrative poetry. What is narrative? What is poetry? And what is narrative poetry? Hey guys, so today we're talking about narrative poetry. What aspects of storytelling and poetics make up narrative poetry and what are some examples? And how can we how can we write a narrative poem if that's something you're interested in? So this is one form that really interests me because I like where different uh, genres meet together. So for example, fiction and poetry, uh, playwriting and fiction, playwriting and poetry, music and poetry, and music and storytelling. So I love where the intersections and praxis of those forms come together, something that I'm, I explore in my own work. One example I've been working on is poetic monologues about people who've experienced mir miracles. And so using a dramatic monologue, but in a poetic form. So that's quite interesting to me. Uh, so I want to talk about, first of all, what are the characteristics of storytelling, of narrative? And what are the characteristics of poetry and how do they come together in narrative poetry? So the elements of storytelling are character, place or setting, plot, so what happens, the action, and then uh, conflict and resolution and drama. So I'll talk more about the dramatic code in a minute because that's also very interesting. Um, so those are the elements of storytelling and narrative. So the poetic elements of figurative language are rhythm and rhyme and meter, alliteration, metaphor, simile. There are others, but we'll just stick with those for the moment. So when those come together, you may have, for example, um, there are a couple of types of narrative poetry specifically, and those might be the epic, such as Homer's Odyssey or the Iliad. Um, then you might have uh, a ballad, such as The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner by Samuel Coleridge. Um, other examples of epics include The Divine Comedy by Dante. And then uh, we have verse novels. We also have... Uh, what almost equates to short stories, but is in a very poetic form, and that's um, examples such as Chaucer's Canterbury Tales, of course. Um, and so uh, examples of what might not be seen as narrative poetry, so looking at not the opposite, but other types of poetry would be uh, imagism, for example, where uh, poets such as Ezra Pound, um, you've got poets such as E.E. E. Cummings, William Carlos Williams uses it, and imagism is, is a type of modernist poetry where it's very focused on the individual images and exploring from every angle those images. And so it can be more abstract, more experimental, but does not necessarily. Um, it can be straightforward as well, but it's, it's very image-based. And so narrative poetry is story-based, imagism is image-based. And so when we talk about the dramatic code, I really recommend a book called The Anatomy of Story. Now, I've placed the link in the description below, and it's one of my favorite books, and I recommend it a lot. I've got it highlighted. I've read it 10 times. And so in that book, the author talks about what's called the dramatic code. Now, the dramatic code is essentially every story has a linear line that we follow as we read through the story. And it starts with the character, and it starts with them having a desire, a want, or a need. And then we see how do they reach that goal? How do they get to that desire? And so um, what happens is as they um, start off with that desire and that call, what then happens is things come to bring conflict to that or to interrupt that goal or to block or to stop. There are obstacles that they must face or they must encounter as they go along re to reach their goal. And so what keeps us engaged in a story, in a dramatic story, is the idea that we're rooting for this person. We want to see them succeed. We want to um, see them reach their goal. And we want to find out how they overcome the obstacles. And quite often there is a learning, there is a, um, a moral that comes out of it, which is based around a character development. So at the start of the story, the character might have a flaw. And what happens is as they encounter obstacles and they have to overcome those obstacles to get what they want, they often have undergo a character change and they become, uh, they learn something and they grow as a person. And so we, um, as we read those stories, it helps us to um, to learn and grow as well. And so in, in the rich tradition of oral storytelling and uh, narration that every culture has, um, that's been one important thing is how, how to transmit culture and how to transmit moral living, right living, um, whichever way you want to look at that, through uh, telling stories. And now, interestingly, um, in a lot of cultures, 
music and um, melody and rhythm and rhyme was often added to those stories as a way to help the the people to remember that story in order to pass it on and so it has within it the idea of being able to memorize and to to then pass it on to the other generations so that's also quite interesting yeah so just to recap so um narrative poetry brings together the elements of narration and of storytelling with the elements of poetry so the elements of, of storytelling we have character setting plot and conflict and also the dramatic code and then uh, the poetic elements, we have the figurative language, such as alliteration, uh, we have simile, metaphor, we have assonance, we have all of those things. And you can look up those online as well. But um, if you're wanting to write a narrative poem, let's look at how we would approach it. So you can approach it first from the narrative side, or you can approach it from the poetic side. Um, so what, what you would want to do first, though, is to think about um, what kind of story you're wanting to tell? So, is it your own story? Are you going to be the who is going to be the narrator of that story? And whose story are they telling? So, who is the character? Who is the the person um, that the poem is about? Where is it set? So, where is the setting? Is it in Ireland? Is it in a house? Is it um, in a field? Where is the person situated? Um, and that, and setting can also include the time of day, the time of year. Um, you can look at things like the seasons, and um, you can look at um, things like nightscapes, landscapes, outdoor, indoor settings. So uh, explore different types of settings and maybe have a look on, online to research um, if you're interested in a particular place or country and wanting to explore it. You can maybe have a look at some images to get inspiration for your setting. Um, and so then we have the plot, which is what happens. So in a narrative, there's always... Um, plot points. So what happens? What actually happens in the story is the action, you know, and quite often there's an inciting, what's called an inciting incident. So at the beginning of a story, we have something happens to the person that causes them to wake up or to receive a call or to have a desire. Um, for example, if someone gets made redundant, that would be an inciting incident. They have a car accident, they meet someone, or it could be a simple thing such as finding a coin on the road. Um, or something much more dramatic, so a death in the family, death of a, a family member or spouse. Um, and so the inciting incident is often what um, then incites the action. Um, so that's just from that's just from storytelling, which is quite interesting. And so um, think about maybe starting with that, starting to think about um, something that's happened to you or to someone else, and then what, what actions resulted from that. And so once you have a little bit of a plot and you kind of plot out your points, um, then you might want to think about how you could maybe do a stanza for each um, plot point, um, or you could um, look at how to create images around those things if you wanted it to be more image-based and not as narrative um, and the thing that sets it apart from microfiction because microfiction is actually very can be very similar to narrative poetry um, because the, the actual form of narrative poetry looks quite similar to microfiction and I'm not talking about epics or ballads I'm talking about um, when you have a specific form called narrative poetry often it's justified across the page in a paragraph of text that runs together and um, that's very similar to microfiction as well. So, and that, that's also another interesting genre if you're wanting to look into exploring fiction um, in a short form. Um, so, have a look at that. And obviously, the short story form as well. So, and, and those sorts of forms don't focus as much on the poetic language, but of course, they it can include those and do include those. Every type of writing does include some type of of figurative language, but poetry is more defined by its use, so um, might have much more emphasis on the rhyme or the alliteration, etc. So, yeah, I hope that um, I hope this has been informative. Um, obviously, this is part of our Editors Speak series, um, and in a couple of weeks, we're going to have a very exciting broadcast, which I'm going to put um, a bit more information about in the link in the description. And it's going to be an Editors Roundtable with Michelle Carhill from Mascara Literary Review and also Michelle Seminara from Verity Lane. And so we're going to have a discussion, we're going to film it in Sydney, and then we're going to broadcast it. And so I've put the event in the description, please. Um, 
uh, keep an eye on the time so that you can tune in when it goes live on our YouTube. So if you have any um, questions about narrative poetry or anything that you'd like to add, anything that I've got wrong or just any suggestions, please prop them in the comments um, and I will see what I can do. Let's have a discussion about it and if there's any other videos you want to see, obviously chuck them in the comments as well and um, we look forward to seeing you in the next video or podcast. Thanks guys.